What's up everybody? Now a bike work stand, although sometimes overthought, is a great tool to have in the workshop, the garage, the shed, wherever you can possibly squeeze one in to make maintenance on your bike that little bit easier. It's gonna get the bike up off the ground, gonna allow you to work on all those moving parts more easily, more freely, to really get your bike working tip top. So for this video, I am gonna need a, a work stand. So let's see if we can get one in here. Perfect, that's just what I was after. Right, well before we carry on, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to show some love to the channel, it really does help us out. You've probably seen the heavy duty steel work stands bolted to the workshop floor in your local bike shop and thought, hmm, that does actually look handy. And they are. But you don't need a fully equipped, cumbersome, bolted to the floor, heavy work stand at a workshop is gonna have, it's gonna take up space in that precious area you've got to work on your bike. No, there are some great alternatives. Now here at the channel, we are obviously sponsored by Park Tools. So we have things like this, this mobile work stand from Park Tools. It folds up all neat and tidy and can be tucked away to be used only when you want it. But there are actually also great alternatives as well. Do you know what I've heard? If you head down your local German supermarket and check out that middle aisle, then you can find some gems in there lying around as well. So if you are thinking of doing any maintenance beyond a simple bolt check, then I would recommend investing in a stand for sure. Okay, we're gonna start a little bit basic, I know, but we just need to cover all bases here. So where you actually have your stand positioned and how you position it, you're gonna want ideally level flat ground because I used to have a cobbled garage, it was an old house. So the ground was all on the piss, it was all over the place. And this thing never sat properly. So if I put it in the wrong place, with the weight of the bike in it, it would actually topple forwards. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to be able to try and put it, if you can, somewhere where you can get around the bike nice and easily. You wanna be able to get around the thing full 360 so you can work on all aspects of the bike. If you are pushed for space, don't worry about it, it can't be helped. What I would suggest is push the stand up against the wall, but have it so that the bike is drive side facing out because that is the side you're gonna be working on more than likely the most. So before this gets clamped into this, we're actually gonna set that up so it's roughly at the right height to make working on the bike nice and comfortable. So my general rule of thumb is that the clamp here is just around shoulder level height. So it's not too hard to lift the bike up and clamp it in place. You can do that quite easily by actually adjusting here how far up and down the clamp will slide to get it at just the right position for you. Where I have the stand position though is going to change depending on what I'm doing on the bike. So this position here, like I said, that I've put it in is great for general maintenance. So spinning those gears, getting it set up, checking the brakes, even moving the cockpit around, things like that adjusting the saddle, obviously where it is on the rails, things like that is going to be perfect. If you're working on parts of the bike lower down, but things that are done up really tight, they require a bit of force, things like the pedals or the bottom bracket. What I'll actually do is I'll slide the stand almost all the way down. So it's clamping the seat, but with the bike sitting on the floor. So it's just holding it whew, nice and upright. That way I don't need to worry about the bike falling over, but I can actually get some nice force into the bottom bracket to undo, do it up. Same with the pedals, things like that. And then thirdly, if I'm doing things like a brake bleed, well then I can rotate the clamp here. So I could drop it down slightly, rotate the clamp so that the bike's pointing up ever so slightly to help that air escape. And then that way I can bleed the brakes nice and easy. So I can get to the calipers, especially at the back, nice and conveniently. The front one's not gonna be too far away. And then I can just flow that fluid all the way up so the air's pushed up and out of the system. Okay, peeps, let's talk clamping your bike and where and how to do it on the bike. So there's definitely some do's and don'ts here, so we're gonna run through them. If you've got a dropper, extend it and you can clamp it on the extended part of the dropper post. Most stands will have like these rubber jaws to avoid scratching and marking anything. If you wanna be really safe, you could chuck a rag in there as well. I sometimes do that if I'm feeling like, sometimes these have worn out over the years or something. If you don't have a dropper post, don't worry, that doesn't matter. But you do need enough ex seat, solid seat post extended. Try not to clamp uh, around the actual seat clamp or anything like that. So it should hopefully go in something smoothly like this. In there, we'll hold the bike. Do that one up nice and tight. And there we go. If you feel the need to, or sadly the only way that you can do it is clamping it to the frame, then please, please, please be really careful when you're tightening up, especially on things like the top tube here. If you put the jaws around that and tighten it too 
tightly, especially with a carbon frame, you can actually squeeze and crack the carbon without even knowing it. Another big one, which I have seen done before, is bikes with external cable routing. So the cable's running on the outside of the frame. They've actually put those in the jaws as well without realizing it sometimes and crushed the hose or the cable. So when you come to bleed a brake and it's like, but this ain't working, why is that? And it's because you've clamped the blooming hose too tight, you silly sausage. And the same with the cables. If you clamp a gear cable in those jaws as well, and you're there changing gear, well, this doesn't even have a cable on this one, but you know what I mean? And the cable's not shifting, it's not changing gear. It's again because you've squeezed that cable. So just be really, really careful. And I would always suggest just go and buy the seat post. Now that your bike's in the stand, you'll find that maintenance jobs have become much easier. You can move around the bike to access the gears, brake calipers, cranks, and cockpit easily. The wheels spin freely, making it easy to check rotors for rubbing as well. So if you are performing more in-depth maintenance on your frame, so things like replacing bushings and bearings and taking the shock out, then this is also where the old stand is gonna come really into its own because it means that if you had the bike, say, standing on just on the floor, lent against the garage wall, you take the shock out, it falls over, bits and pieces go everywhere. Whereas now I could take that shock out, the frame's not gonna get damaged, I'm not gonna lose any bits because I can carefully take this out. Same with all the little bits of linkage bolts, bushings, lay them on the side here, and I've got it all exactly ready to go back in. And really, it's just gonna make my life a whole lot easier. There we go then, a few quick tips on how to use a work stand. Now, have you got one? Do you want one? Well, let me know in the comments down below. I really like to know how you guys and girls actually use your stands. Like, what do you do in it? Let me know. But anyway, I'm out of here. Thank you very much for watching, everyone, and I'll catch you later.